Hey guys, girls, dudes, to that, or whatever else you may wish to be called, my name is Zeke Wolf, and welcome to the Audacity 2020 update video. So I know this video has been a long time coming, and a lot of you have been asking for it, and I've just, uh, I, I, I haven't been here. I haven't been on YouTube. I've been away. Been off in Twitch land. But now we're here, and we're back. And we're going to address some of these update things, make a new video, and just answer some of the questions that you all have. So let's begin with, first, editing a piece of audio using the latest version of Audacity, Audacity 2.4.2. A lot of this stuff is going to go exactly the same as it did before, but a couple of you had questions on how to do certain things because the versions had been changed. So I just recorded a quick, about 20 second clip for us to go through and mess around with this or see how the process is done. All right, so let's give this a listen before we start editing through it. Hey, guys, girls, dudes, that's whatever else you may wish to be called. My name is Zeke Wolf and welcome to the audio that we are going to be editing for this update video. Now I'm going to throw some mouse clicks and some keyboard clacks in here so we can test out noise gate at the end. Thank you. All right, and there we have the audio. So it's kind of hollow, not that great. We're going to fix it up. First thing you're going to want to do is select an empty space of audio. You do that so you can get data for noise reduction. That's going to be used in order to get rid of any ambient noise that's in the recording. So now we're going to go with noise reduction. Make sure the settings and step two are the same. So that's a 12, 6, 3, and reduce is bulleted at the bottom. Then we have get noise profile. After that's done, click this box over here to your left, go back to effect, noise reduction, and hit OK. And now your noise reduction has been applied. Next, we are going to go through compression. So hit effects, go to compressor this time, and we're going to quickly go through this. Ignoring threshold for now, we're going to tackle that at the end. So noise floor, just set it to a negative 40. Ratio, 3 to 1. Attack time, 0 0.10 seconds, and release time, 1 second. Now the one I said we're going to go over and we are going to do so now is our threshold. So what exactly is this going to do? Essentially what this is going to do is normalize our low volume areas and our high volume, volume areas to a certain point. So like a negative 15 is right around here at the 0 0.5. Things are going to somewhat normalize themselves right around that point. Negative 20 is somewhere a bit further down. I think in the case of this one, I'm actually going to go with a negative 15. So hit OK on that. Let's do it. Let it do its thing. And next, we are going to be hitting the equalizer. So back to effect. And this time, the equalizer is called Filter Curve EQ. So we go in here, it looks very similar to what we had before. Like before, if you want more bass, more warmth term, term, more warmth sounds, you raise the bass end. Increase those mids of your voice, bring that up a bit, and finally bring, bring treble up a bit, put treble down a bit, whatever you decide to do. You could even get rid of some bass from your voice if you believe your voice is maybe a bit too low and you want to accent the highs a little bit more. Now the new version of this will be in the description below. To import this, go manage, import, and then just select the file. That said, I still recommend that you create your own that works to your voice. But anyway, 
we're going to apply the filter curve EQ. And that bit is now done. Next we have normalized. Normalize is pretty simple. Just go into effect, hit normalize. We have a couple of settings here. All you have to do is make sure these first two boxes are checked and the one that you can input data in, you just go negative one. And then you can okay it. And this is going to bring everything up or bring the highest point up to a negative one and bring everything else up with it in uniform. Next, you go effect limiter, which is right there. And this, you're going type hard limit. And then just copy the settings I have here, zero, zero, negative four, 10, and no. Negative four is the main important one. And that's just going to limit the highs to a negative four, kind of bring them down some, smooth it out a little bit. But you're good to hit okay. Then we go to effect one more time. Hit that normalize one more time. And just same settings as before. And pre noise gate, this is actually your finished audio. Let's give it a listen. Hey guys, go zoot suits or whatever else you may wish to be called. My name is Zeke Wolf and welcome to the audio that we are going to be editing for this update video. Now I'm going to throw some mouse clicks and some keyboard clacks in here so we can test out noise gate at the end. Thank you. Now this audio is interesting because this thank you right here thank you. is actually really low. It's, let's see, about a negative 17 or so, which means that what we take out has to be probably around a negative 22 and lower. So that way it doesn't take out this thank you right here, but we'll take out some of these sounds. The rest of them you will have to take out and, uh, or individually rather. Whether that be in here or in your video editing program. But for noise gate, we're going effect, noise gate, and then have it selected. So here's the thing with noise gate. When I did the last video, it was a plugin that you had to download separately. I do not know if that is still the case, but I will have it linked in the description down below regardless in case it is. If it's not the case and it comes with it now by default, like mine did when I downloaded this, fantastic. But anyway, let's go through here. So we have select function as gate because we're using it for the gate. Stereo linking linked stereo tracks because we want this thing to stay in uniform. Apply low cut filter, no. Gate frequency is above kilohertz, zero. Level reduction, negative 30. Gate threshold is what we're going to be adjusting and then attack DK, just keep it at 250. So this I'm going to be setting to negative 22. Now, as you can see, that took out some of it here, a little bit of it here, some of it right in this section, but most of it I'm going to have to do in post. And that's fine. That's okay. That's how these things go sometimes. But as for an update on using Audacity nowadays, like I said, it's pretty much still exactly the same. Not too much has been changed, just some menus have been changed, some names have been changed. Next, I want to go through some questions that you all have had for me in the comments of that video that weren't tackled here. Alright, so the first question. As this tutorial is for spoken vocals, will these settings apply to song vocals? The answer there is yes. However, with vocals, you will probably want to go in even further. Either in maybe your DAW of choice. And add reverb or some other vocal effects to give it a bit more. What this will do in terms of vocals is the same it will do in terms or song vocals is the same as it will do in terms of speaking vocals. It's going to raise everything to a similar volume and it's going to clean it up a bit. Next question. So we have to do this every time we make an audio on Audacity. 
The answer there is no, actually. So the first thing here we're going to do is I'm going to take this back to its very beginning state, which should be this one here. And then I'm going to redo the noise reduction. The reason for that is the noise reduction you will always want to do manually because the ambient noise can change any time that you record. So you always want to do noise reduction manually. Same with noise gate. So noise reduction, noise gate, always do them manually. But then, there's a nice thing here. It used to be called chains, now it's called a macro. But you're going to go in here, you're going to go new, name it, whatever you want. Commentary for video macro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a good name. And then you're going to start inserting what you need. So noise reduction you did manually. However, next you have the compressor. So with compressor, you are normally safe setting it to a 15 or a 20. In this case, it's set to 15. However, if you want to edit, just click on it. Hit edit, it'll prop up this menu and you can change this. So if you run through the macro, you don't like maybe the compressor bit of it, then you can just change this to what you want. I think I'm actually going to keep this at a 17. So it's right there in the middle. Then go back, click on end because this will add it the next one to the top of whatever you have clicked and we just want to keep going down this line. So now we're going to insert and filter curve EQ. So add that. Then we add our normalizer, our first one. It's over to the ends, normalize. Then we add our limiter. And the settings for each of these will always be what you last used or what you last set up. So if you jump to the end, didn't go through the rest of the video, I recommend doing that and you can just edit this part like I showed you with the first one. But anyway, we add our second normalize. Then we hit OK. Then tools, apply the macro and It'll just run through the whole thing. And then you just apply the noise gate manually like we did. And that's it. That's a macro. And you can do that for every bit of audio that you record. So if you're trying to release like a video every day, you don't have to go through this process every single day. You can just run through a macro and you're good. It is incredible. But with that, we're going to leave this video here. I hope this update has been good for you. If there's anything that I have not addressed, let me know in the comments down below and I will respond as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Later, Wolfpack.